Hello, everybody. So we are here to continue the series of uh, mains answer writing practice. And in the previous lecture, I had given you the example of uh, a question that how to attempt in the mains examination. But few of you asked about that, uh, the basic writing techniques with example. And that's why I'm making this video and the series of videos will keep coming on the, the geography, ecology, environment and the various subjects. So first of all, I want to share the very fundamental thing that uh, if a question is asked, if a question is asked, then what should be your approach? What should be your approach of the answer? So now in this, you know, what you have to talk about, the first one is there and that is called introduction. Now, many a times you have heard about this term, introduction. Many people have said that the introduction should be good. But a very simple question is that what should be written in the introduction? Should be written in introduction. This is question number one. And the question number two is there that what should be the word limit? What should be word limit? And the third question is there that uh, is it true that uh, writing introduction is essential? It means its importance. Importance. So one by one, I will answer all the questions. Now, first of all, you see that the question is you, what should be written? What should be written? So very simply, most of the people, even the, you know, the major coaching institutes, they have said that introduction should carry the definition of a particular topic upon which the question has been asked. All right. It is absolutely, absolutely a childish idea. Why? Because if the introduction is the definition, then what you will be writing in the body? All right, so it is never a good idea. Introduction is actually face of your answer, of your answer. All right, suppose if a question has one part, one part, or it has two parts, or it has more than two parts, say three parts. All right, so your introduction must carry all the parts all the parts it must reflect that reflect that what your answer is going to carry fine it must reflect your answer that if the examiner is in hurry though he is not but just to understand that if the examiner is in hurry even then he will be able to understand that what the candidate has understood about the question and how he is going to approach I hope I am very much loud and clear. All right. So this is point number one. Point number two is there that what should be the word limit? Two types of mainly questions are, questions are asked nowadays in the exam. One is the 250 word and other one is in the 150 word. You simply take lump sum 10%. Lump sum 10%. Maximum, if you want to increase, so that should be 15%. Otherwise, avoid. If you take a very general word limit, so here it becomes around 15 words, here it becomes around 25 words. All right. So, if suppose if any short of luxury you want to take, if the multiple uh, parts of the questions are there, in that case, you can go up to 25 to 30 words here. And here you can go up to 18 to 20, 22 words like this. Not more than this. All right. Not more than this. Why? Because introduction is just a part, it is not the entire answer. Now, finally, the question is, what is its significance? So there you see that many of us, many of us means the candidates, have a certain feeling that they have been a very good students during the graduation, matriculation. They are a topper of the university. They are IIT and they are from the IAMS. They are from the Delhi School of Economics, et cetera, et cetera. And very well prepared they are at least. But this is what your feeling is not reflected 
either way to the examiner he does not know about you that's why whatever the perception he is going to create about your preparation that is actually through your through your introduction that's why your introduction should be good enough i hope it is very much clear now come to the point number 2 the second part is there and that is called body and this is actually you can say the heart of the answer heart of the answer because this is what you have to write now here obviously the word limit the word limit for the body part that is around you can say uh, 60% 60% remember 20% you have already given to the intro and somewhere like this i will be talking about the conclusion conclusion fine so for that just keep 20% to 60% word limit there it should be depending upon whether the question is in 150 words or in 250 words now now here only two questions or you can say some sort of doubt is there among the student that what is the right pattern to write whether it should be point wise or either here it should be paragraph wise fine remember if you have to write something conceptual that conceptual must come must come in paragraphs through paragraphs all right conceptual means any idea you are talking about suppose if any short of analysis you have to give give so that should be in paragraph and if something that is factual so that should come into the points now as you find out that nowadays in humanity uh, in most of the paper like the paper 1 2 3 and all the most of the questions are there and these questions have a short of you know the blend of conceptual and the factual, uh, factual things then obviously in that case your answer should become what your answer should also be carrying the paragraph as well as the point wherever it is required whichever way it is required that you can give all right now the second thing is there that if a question is asked so in that case every answer should be uh, should be supported with the flow chart flow chart fine be it the history be it the polity be it the economy geography environment anything that is actually the art of writing why because that way you will be able to save your words words all right flow chart there should be appropriate diagrams this is also a way of presentation fine if possible and if the question is asking for you should give suitable stats and to give the stats you can use bar diagram pie chart etc this kind of thing so these are actually you can say the tools to minimize your word limit as well as to satisfy the examiner that you are a well versed candidate and you have a obvious knowledge of all these things all right so this is actually the body part now now let us talk about the next one and that is called the what should be the conclusion so conclusion if you are asked remember remember uh, in most of the cases since our childhood we people have learned that uh, there must be a conclusion and it is very much part of the structure of the answer and that's why what they what mostly the candidate do that uh, after writing the answer then they write that on the basis of this analysis we can say that and then they repeat either the first paragraph or the question itself this is absolutely a worst way of writing and you are making the absolute misuse of the word which could have become your asset so so what should be in conclusion so in conclusion in conclusion you can give the way forward fine you can talk about new findings which are related to that you can give a you know you can leave your answer on a positive note of feeling all that 
fine so these are the ways that way you should write and once again the word limit should be less than 20% of the uh, uh, word limit the examiner has given to you now if you have understood this thing and i'm sure that many of you of course but the people who have not yet i am giving one example and i have written a question i have written a, a one answer for you people and that i want to share with you so that you will be able to get the exact idea that what you are supposed to write now here you see that i have given a question uh, that what do you understand by the concept of sea floor spreading discuss the evidences supporting the concept and the word limit i have given and that is 250 word all right so there you see there you see that 250 word is there so this is what actually i have written the intro intro and i will show you you can see that this is the question number part number one what do you understand by the concept of c for spreading and then the part number two is there that discuss the evidences supporting the concept so here you see the answer says that exam uh, ex expansion of the sea floor along with the m uh, mid oceanic bridge uh, ridges that is m o r now since it is the mid oceanic ridge three words so now the once again you know in the answer sheet the space limit is there so that's why i have here only mentioned that i will be writing m o r instead of mid oceanic ridge and now i will be using the same this is the art of writing is considered as important evidence to prove plate tectonics all right to prove plate tectonics there are there are several geological thermal anomaly and the magnetic reversal related evidences to prove its authenticity i hope it is very much loud and clear that the both the aspect of the question have been touched now if the examiner is uh, uh, is uh, has to make his mind that what the candidate has written then now he can very much be sure now a simple uh, information that the harry has and that this they have talked about this mor is located on the divergent plate margin and entire sea floor is spreading out along with it to converge with the another plate all right thus it is established uh, it establishes the mobility of the lithospheric slab now the question number 1 is answered now they have talked about the evidences the authenticity of this uh, rests upon the following evidences now you can see that the point is also there point is also there and this way the pointing i have mentioned but this is what the analysis so now it will be going into the paragraph now this answer obviously this diagram sorry i have taken from the uh, google only that uh, you need to draw and uh, in the many of my video lectures you will find that i have drawn the maps and i have shown you how to do that all right so this way i come now finally you see i have just copied what the most of the candidate do all right as i have suggested that everything has been written now sea floor spreading was the idea which had established the theory of plate tectonics and the cause of the various endogenic forces fine now it seems to be okay okay sir theek hi to hai but you see that i have talked about almost everything here that you will find that the same thing i have talked here and that is that it is considered as the important evidence of the uh, evidence to prove plate tectonics so now tell me that what is the difference between this one and that is one and this one it is almost the same almost the same it looks new but it is not and that's why in my viewpoint it is not a correct way so what you should write you should take it from this theory plate tectonics cause of various endogenic forces and just add that today if we know about now about volcanism seismicity mountain building processes processes then for all these we need to be thankful thankful about thankful we should be thankful sorry we should thankful to the m uh, c floor spreading c floor spreading 
your job is done up now what you have done in this you have actually given another information and indication to the examiner that you are not only prepared about the sea floor spreading fine you have actually grasped the entire topic the entire you know the subject and that's why you know about the volcanism you know about the seismicity you know about the mountain building etc all that it means you are making this uh, you, you are uh, making this question of an opportunity to prove that you have a very good idea about the entire physical geography means the geomorphology all right and definitely this thing will give you a, an edge over the other candidates and this is what you are supposed to do all right so i hope that my this effort will not go in vain you will learn the art of writing and you will share your feedback also with me through the mail or the uh, uh, through the comment box thank you very much for watching please like share and subscribe